Hello everybody, as I'm sure you've heard by now, there's some interesting astronomy news about Venus. Yes, it would seem that the gas phosphine has been detected in its atmosphere. And this is actually pretty cool, because right now there aren't a whole lot of abiotic processes that we know of to produce large amounts of phosphine, especially under the conditions on Venus, like it's, it's, it's not really conducive for its production. And phosphine breaks down easily in UV light. Like, it's made of uh, one phosphorus, three hydrogen. So you'd expect that the pla a planet like Venus, which is close to the sun, if there is phosphine, it would be broken down rapidly and you wouldn't detect large amounts of it. And again, there isn't a huge amount of it, but there's enough of it that it's higher than it should be, or at least you'd expect. Which means that it's being replenished continuously. And the detection was actually made using two telescopes at two different times, which adds some credence to it. So it's actually quite interesting. Uh, is, it, is this a confirmation of Cytherian life? Now, a lot of people say Venusian, but Cytherian is also a proper term for life from Venus. Look it up. Anyways, so is this a confirmation of Cytherian life? No, right now it is not a confirmation. It's an interesting biosignature that we'll have to look into. It's probably... There's probably some stupid abiogenic explanation for it, but there is also a good chance that it is biotic, just out of the nature of phosphine and how it's produced. And this could actually be a, like one of multiple indications for life in Venus that we, we already have. For one, there's strange UV absorption in its upper atmosphere that we still don't know what causes it. Like, like there's bands of UV absorption in the clouds. And one thought is that it's microbiotic life in the clouds that have a compound in their membrane that absorbs UV light like sunscreen to protect them. Or they could be using the UV light as energy. Don't know. Uh, and there's also, and this one's the most interesting, personally, the Venera missions to Venus uh, in the 60s and 70s, they did find strange particles in the cloud layers that were about the same shape and size as bacteria, like they were elongated, very small particles. So that, along with the UV absorption and the phosphine, really is an interesting combination of data sets we have from Venus. So what happens next? Well, other scientists are probably going to do observations to confirm the presence of phosphine to begin with. Like, the team that wrote the paper already did a really good job uh, trying to rule out, like, error, but it's still always good to have um, third-party verification of these things, because the more data sets we have, the better. So, and if it is confirmed that there is phosphine in the atmosphere, then, well, we'll have to go back and check. Venus is pretty close by. Its orbit is the closest to our orbit in terms of other planets. Um, it's pretty easy to get to, so definitely have to go back and check. And at that point, we can just look for bacteria or a geologic processes that would produce it and get a definitive answer. So over the next, like, 10, 15 years, we'll probably get a definitive answer of whether or not there is life in the clouds of Venus. And that is just really, really cool. Because even if it's no, it's still, like, learning how phosphine can be produced in large amounts, A, biogenically, would still be pretty cool. But I'm personally hoping that we do find uh, Cytherian bacteria, because... That's just so cool. I, I love it. It's similar to on the moon Titan. There's strange hydrogen depletion on its surface. Like, upper atmosphere, lots of hydrogen. Mid-range, lots of hydrogen. But at the surface, very little hydrogen. And it's like, what's causing that? And there was a paper written by astrobiologist Chris McKay which talked about it. How life on Titan might respirate hydrogen and produce methane for energy. So that hydrogen depletion could be caused by microbes or other such things eating hydrogen. So, same kind of deal. Like, there's an interesting data point there. We'll have to go back and check. Um, this will be a quick little video. I just wanted to talk about it. I am, I love it. Venus is such a great planet, one of my favorites. So, I really hope we um, start actually sending missions there because so far, over the last like 20 years, every time a Venus mission pops up and tries to get funding, it always loses to Mars or asteroids. It's very disappointing so yeah um i'll keep watching this as it progresses i'll do updates as we learn more because it's fascinating and astrobiology especially uh atmospheric life is kind of what i'm focusing on right now in terms of my own research so it's 
quite interesting. I, I absolutely love it. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, link to the paper below. And yeah. Space.